welcome back to my channel if you have been here before and hello if you are new. My name is Becky and you're watching my channel Notes from the Sewing Room. Today I'm going to be sharing a bit of a bumper edition of everything that I've made during May and June this year. I didn't get around to filming my May makes video so I just thought why not I'm going to put them all together for you to see. So I've actually got I think seven different projects to share with you. Um, most of which I've actually made and one I'm still actually working on. So I wanted to share them all with you. So I hope you enjoy watching today. I've got a range of different projects, both in woven fabrics and in jersey fabrics as well. So I hope you enjoy watching. If you do, I would love it if you could press that like button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Um, by liking and commenting, it really does help YouTube to share this video with other people who are interested in sewing as well. So I really, really appreciate that. So thank you very much. So June seems to have been a month basically of challenges on Instagram. There's so many different you know kind of sewing things going on this month that I wanted to take part in but I've had to really kind of narrow it down of things that I've got time for I've really really wanted to take part in. So the first one was sew a t-shirt for summer. So I took part in this last year and really enjoyed it so I wanted to take part again. So this actually I'm wearing is the t-shirt that I've actually made um, as my entry for the sew a t-shirt for summer challenge. If you have a look at the hashtag um, sew a t-shirt for summer um, over on Instagram I'm sure you'll see lots of gorgeous inspiration on there from people around the world who've made different types of t-shirts um, but I've actually gone for a tried and tested t-shirt that I absolutely love and you'll probably recognize it if you've watched my videos before and this is the free pattern it's the galaxy t-shirt by pattern scissors cloth so I absolutely love this t-shirt I love the poofy sleeves and um, I've actually lowered the neckline down by about four inches on this version, um, as I have actually with my previous versions as well. This is a fantastic download if you haven't got around to making this one yet, I definitely recommend it. It's not too fitted through the body, there is actually a little bit of um, wiggle room in there if you want to, but obviously you can um, size down or size up as you please. I've actually made the smallest uh, size in the pattern pack, uh, which I think was the, I might be wrong, 80 centimeters not sure that's probably wrong um, but anyway I had a bit of a bit of a trouble with the sizing originally but I ended up just sizing down to the smallest size and I think that's absolutely worked absolutely fine for me so my measurements are a 32 bust 28 waist and 40 hip um, just if you're interested so I'll move a little bit closer to the camera just so you can see this gorgeous fabric so it's actually got bunny rabbits on which I think is super super cute so I bought this fabric it's a cotton jersey and I bought it from once upon a fabric so I've actually never bought anything from them before but as soon as I spotted this on the website I thought wow I've got to have that I just love the cute bunny print and how it's got um kind of there was like a a, a tiger leopard print to them and just animal print and I don't think it's too childlike so I really like it anyway it's a little bit quirky without being too much <laughs> if you know what I mean but yeah I really like it so hopefully you do as well so that's the first thing that I want to share with you so the second thing that I want to share with you is actually the skirt that I'm wearing so I will stand up so you can actually see but I am going to put in pictures of each of the different items that I'm mentioning today so you can actually see me them in them kind of full length and see what they actually look like um, properly I would love it of course if you have made any of these things yourselves uh, to let me know how you found it how you found the material you used, how you found the pattern, if you've got any tips for me in the future, things to try, that kind of thing. Do feel free to leave me any messages below that you'd like to and I will put all of the details of the patterns that I'm mentioning today in the description box if, if you'd like to check that out. So let me stand up. So this skirt is the third version of this pattern that I've made and it's the Forget Me Not Patterns Ella Skirt. So it's actually a PDF download that you can get and it's available in sizes 28 through to 48. So I actually um, sized between sizes um, when I initially cut out this pattern. I think I cut a size 34 at the waist and went out to a 36 at the hip. But actually I found that there was quite a lot of ease in it for me personally. So I sized down slightly um, after I made it. But actually this time I've not used the kind of strict 
a straightforward pattern um, as, as it was uh, supplied to me. I've actually used the blog on their website and the Forget Me Not Patterns website to create an elastic waist version, which I absolutely love. I find it really comfortable. And I've actually gone for a lightweight denim version this time because you'll know if you watch my channel, I absolutely love wearing denim and um, it just goes with so many things when I'm working at home or when I'm out and about. I just love it how you can put any kind of t-shirt with it and it works perfectly well. So I'm just going to stand up so you can see. One of the things that I love about this skirt is that it's got a ruffle detail on the bottom. I feel like I'm a little bit of a latecomer when it comes to the ruffle, but I am loving it now. Um, so this is the midi version. So I'm quite tall, as you probably know, I'm five foot ten. So um, the midi version um, lengthwise works fine for me. I've not added any length to it or anything like that. So let me stand up so you can see. So this is the elastic waistband. Um, so I think that's worked out really nicely. I'll stand on the chair so hopefully you can see a little bit more. So this is the ruffle around the bottom of the skirt. Um, and I think having this in the denim fabric actually um, adds a little bit more structure to the denim um, or to the ruffle should I say. So I think that kind of works a bit differently from the ones that I've made before because my two previous versions, one in a red viscose and one in a pink viscose, are very lightweight, very, very floaty. So they've got a different look and feel. So I really like this one, how it's just a little bit different for me. So I definitely recommend trying the Ella skirt if you haven't made it before. Um, I've really enjoyed it every time that I've made it. I find it comfortable. It's not too short, not too long. Um, I guess that's because it's a midi version. <laughs> and um, yes, I really love it. It's one of my favorite patterns that I've tried for a while, so um, I definitely recommend it to you if you are looking for a skirt to make for yourself or for someone else this summer. The next project that I want to share with you today is actually something that I've made as part of the So Fruity Challenge, hopefully I've got that right, on Instagram. And I was really up for taking part in this challenge. I didn't take part last year and I felt like I missed out a little bit because there were so many gorgeous things uh, floating around in terms of pictures and things that people have made. So I decided that I was gonna have a go this year in some gorgeous cotton poplin fabric, which I got from a So Haley Jane box, um, a subscription box that I got. So that is a little sneak peek of the fabric, which I'm just gonna show you in a second properly. Um, again, I will pop in a picture of me wearing the shirt as well. So I've used a new look pattern. So I don't generally use kind of new look type patterns. Um, I'm more of an independent pattern type person, but I wanted to have a go at this one. I thought that it looked really fun. So this is the N6707 pattern. I'll just hold that up to the camera there so you can see. So you've got a couple of different versions that you can do. You can do a ruffle around the collar. You could do a plain collar version. You could do, I think there's three different versions actually, or you could do a shirt with no collar. Now I would say that I found that this pattern has come up a little bit short on me. Um, I feel a bit silly about it really because I did look up the pattern instructions and I looked at the length of the, the bodice pieces and stuff before I cut out the fabric and I thought, yeah, 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 it's gonna be fine. But actually, now it's made up and I've, I've not done a very wide hem at all. I've literally overlocked it and turned it up a couple of times on the bottom to get a nice finish but it is a little bit short. So it's absolutely fine tucked into a high-waisted skirt, but if you were planning on wearing it, for example, over jeans or, um, I don't know, over a pair of trousers for work or something like that, you might wanna consider adding a little bit of length if you are as tall as myself or taller or, you know, just depends on what you like personally. But um, I decided to actually do my own version of the collar. So what I've done is I've actually added some piping around the collar, which has worked really nicely. And um, one of the things that I loved about this pattern was that you can do a pleated sleeve. So I've actually never done that before. And it's such a nice technique. And it just works so beautifully to create a gorgeous kind of poofy sleeve that's just a little bit different to a gather. So let me show you my top. So I've actually made this in a straightforward size 10. So this is available in US sizes four through to 16 in this particular pattern that I have here. Um, so the size 10 seems to have worked out fine for me apart from the length. Um, so this is my gorgeous blouse. So I've never actually done piping before and I feel like I've got a bit of a taste for it now, to be honest. Um, this has worked out really nicely um, and I was really pleased. It's quite a big collar. So I've actually managed to get uh, my piping out of one metre. I only had one metre of piping. So I actually reduced the seam allowance slightly um, 
when I was actually sewing in the piping just to make it stretch around the whole collar. Um, so um, I did lose a little bit there, seam allowance wise. I had to make my seam allowance on the collar about two centimeters rather than one and a half, but hey ho, I think it's worked out great. So um, that's the collar, um, it's really nice. It's um, quite a large collar without being too, um, too big, if that makes sense. These are the pleated sleeves. So you probably can't see because it's quite a busy fabric um, how the pleats actually work, but honestly, it's absolutely gorgeous. And then it's got this uh, little cuff detail just around there as well. Um, I've actually used some uh, plain red buttons down the front here, which I had in my stash. Um, so they've worked out perfectly as well, I, I think, um, because of the, the right colour red. Um, and it's finished with a facing on the inside. So I've literally top stitched that all the way around and then down the front of the blouse as well. So that's actually holding uh, that in place really nicely and you've not got any of that annoying kind of facing popping up in the background and I find that really irritating so um but this this has worked out really really nice and I think I'm going to get lots of wear out of this um I think I can wear it into the office but I think I can also wear it at home as well it's such a lovely jolly fabric I don't know if you had any of this fabric from a So Hayley Jane box set or, or from a So Hayley Jane subscription box or from another supplier. Um, but if you have, I'd love to know what you used your fabric for. Um, I personally think it's worked great from, from a shirt, for to make a shirt, but I think it would look gorgeous as lots of different projects, to be honest, a dress or a lovely skirt or anything like that. So yes, let me know what you've made with yours. The next thing that I wanted to show with you today is actually a work in progress. So I've actually had this on my sewing table slash dining room table <laughs> for um, quite a few weeks, to be honest. And I keep picking it up, doing a little bit and putting it down. And I don't really know why, but that's just the way that it's kind of worked out. So this is the Nina Lee Camden Pinafore dress. I've had this pattern in my pattern box for probably a good couple of years, to be honest but um, I finally got around to doing it. So I've actually made this also out of a denim. I've decided not to do the full lining in the bodice as it's supposed to have, but instead I've added on some bias binding at the moment around the neckline. I haven't quite done the, um, the arm sockets yet, but I'm gonna hold up where I've got to at the moment. And um, I'm hoping to get this finished over the next week or so, so it is ready for my holiday. Um, but it's got some lovely details. Um, I just realized it's a little bit creasy, sorry. Um, so it's got this kind of, um, um, v neckline that's not too deep, which is quite nice. No sausage dog. You coming in? You coming in? Oh yes. We've got a gate crasher. We've got a gate crasher. This is William. He's just come home from nursery with his daddy. You want to say hi? Yes. You want to say hi? Yeah. Yeah. You're waving. Good boy. I can't remember where I got to now. <laughs> so yes, I've started to do some bias binding, which is just around the um, the top finish of my collar, around the neckline. And I've actually used this really nice bias binding, which um, I've actually managed to put on upside down, uh, <laughs> which is the made to measure bias binding from the Specky Seamstress. So I like that. Um, I finished the dress on the back with an invisible zip, uh, which has worked quite nicely. I've got this denim from Minerva in exchange for a blog post on their website, which to be honest, I haven't posted yet, but I will be doing soon when I've actually finished this. Um, this dress has got some nice details if you haven't made it before, um, or pin for, should I say. Um, it's got some princess seams down the front, which I always think are really nice and they do add a really nice um, structure, you know, shape to the front of the garment. Um, but I've actually had to take mine in slightly around the bust area. So I've made this in a size 10 at the top and then I've graded out to a size 12 on the skirt area. Um, so yes, I have had a bit of a faff with taking in the princess seams, if I'm honest but I think I've, I've achieved quite a good fit now. Um, it's actually got a waistband um, around the middle and then you've got some uh, pocket details. To be honest, I'm a little bit disappointed with the pockets because they're not very deep at all. You can see how much of my hand is sticking out there. I think they're probably more for show perhaps than they are for um, actual use. So I'm a little bit disappointed with those and I'm kind of wondering if it was the best thing to put them on or not. Um, I have been considering maybe top stitching them down so that it's just like an extra design detail. Um, let me know if you've made the dress. I'm not sure if I've cut out the pockets wrong or something because they do seem to be rather short. Um, but maybe it's just me, I'm not sure. Um, so round the hem on this one, I have used a different um, bias binding. Basically, I didn't have enough of the pink. So I've got this one, which I've got the planets on. So I thought that would be quite fun to have around the bottom of my skirt. So it's got quite a wide um, 
skirt on this one, which is quite nice. I love an A-line skirt, so that worked well for me. Um, I haven't actually got any pictures of myself wearing this dress yet, but when I have, I'll be uh, sure to share them with you. Um, so yes, but this is um, it's going to be a lovely dress, even though it's a little bit creasy at the moment. I just need to get the ironing board out and uh, sort that one out. So that's that. So um, the next thing I wanted to share with you is actually an upcycling project. So I'm going to pop in a little bit of video of um, what this looked like before and what it looks like now. Um, so it actually started off as a dress and I decided that the dress wasn't quite right for me. So I just decided to upcycle it basically. So I turned it into a lovely summery skirt, which are some of my favourite colours. They are navy blue and it's got spots on. And I've managed to use these buttons from my stash that have got uh, little spots on as well. So they're red and spotty, which I think is quite cute. Um, so this is uh, basically made, as you can see, a gathered skirt into a little waistband. Um, and I've just put the buttons down the front there. Um, it's got a lovely floaty style to it. I didn't use a pattern to create this one. I literally, um, although I did use uh, the pattern pieces from the Simple Sew Grey Skirt to create the actual waistband. Um, so the grey skirt is supposed to have a zip at the back, but I literally added on three centimetres at each side of the centre front. And then that allowed me to, uh, room, should I say, to put the a button placket down the front and it all seems to have measured up okay. Um, but yes, I really like this one. And I think I'm gonna get a lot of wear out of that one over the summer season. And to be honest, I can probably wear it in winter with tights and a cardigan or whatever as well. Um, if you enjoy your upcycling, I'd love to know some of the things that you've perhaps made recently. Um, you know, if you've made skirts, garments for yourself, something for someone else. Um, I'm always looking for new upcycling ideas. I'm always on the lookout for things that I can upcycle either in my own wardrobe or if my husband's throwing something out or picking something up from a charity shop, that kind of thing. Um, so yes, I'd love to have a little bit of upcycling inspiration if you've got any there. Um, so yes, that's that one. The next thing that I wanted to share with you today is actually something that I've made for my little boy William, who you just saw before. So I love to put William in dungarees, and um, this is actually the Poppy and Jazz Dandelion dungarees. So um, here they are. So um, this is actually made out of a French terry fabric, which I got from by Graziella Fabrics. Um, in exchange for doing an Instagram giveaway for them, uh, which unfortunately is now closed. So uh, apologies about that if you didn't actually get a chance to take part. Um, but yes, this is a lovely, lovely fabric. So I've actually done a slight hack of these. So you may have heard me talk about this before. So it's supposed to have a full lining in, but I, I thought that for summer, it's gonna to be too hot. And particularly in a French tarot, it's gonna to be too hot. So I decided to just create a facing to go onto the inside of the um, of the dungarees. If I just take them off the hanger, you should be able to see. So that's the facing on the inside of the um, of the dungarees there. So I basically traced the um, the same pattern pieces that you should use for the dungarees, and then I've just cut it off slightly under the arm sockets, and then I followed exactly the same instructions that were in the pattern envelope. But um, instead of um, doing the full lining, I've literally put in the facing instead. Um, the other change that I made was because the, the, the legs are also supposed to be finished with a full lining. Instead, I've added on a little cuff at the bottom of the ankle, which I think is quite cute and so easy to do. I've literally made these on my overlocker. As you can see, I've actually used some pink overlocker thread that I had on my machine already. Um, and I'm really, really pleased with these. I think they look super cute on him. So I will pop in a picture of him wearing the dungarees. Um, we've got quite a nice picture of us wearing a little matching outfit, which um, I shall show you my matching jumper next. Um, but yes, I, I love making things for, for William to wear. And um, yeah, I'm always looking for new things to make. So. so the final thing that I wanted to share with you today is another French Terry um, outfit. And this is one for myself. This is actually the Roxy jumper. Gosh, this one looks a little bit creased as well, sorry. <laughs> um, this is actually the Roxy jumper by Sew Over It. So I've wanted to make this pattern for ages and I know we're in summer, but in the UK, we do tend to have a little bit of chilly weather sometimes over the summer season. So I thought, what the heck, I'm gonna make myself a jumper. So this is actually a PDF download and it's available in sizes six through to 30. I've made mine in a size 10 with no changes. This is quite a cropped jumper. So if you like a cropped jumper, great. But if you don't, then you might wanna consider adding on a little bit of length to it. So this has got some lovely features. It's got quite a, a scoopy neckline there, which I quite like. Um, I would say that in the French terry fabric, I found that the neckline, uh, the neckband, shall I say, didn't have enough give in it, didn't have enough stretch. So I've actually had to add in a piece of about three inches to the neckband, uh, which I think I've kind of incorporated okay at the back. You probably can't 
see very well but yeah I've added that in there so I think that works okay um, it's got some lovely um, poofy sleeve detail so it's actually um, a flat insertion around the uh, top of the shoulder there and then you've actually got the uh, gathered detail just around the cuff. Um, I really like that the sleeves are nice and long on me because I have got quite long arms. So um, yes, I think this works really nicely and it's got a lovely waistband as well. It looks lovely sat on the top of um, a high-waisted skirt, um, kind of a denim skirt, something like that. I think it'll look nice with, nice with I don't know, maybe a pencil skirt or some high-waisted jeans or um, I think you could wear it over a dress. That could be quite nice as well. So I think you've got quite a lot of different style choices that you could do with this one. Um, I will definitely make this jumper again, uh, probably later on in the year now, to be honest. But I'm, I'm already kind of thinking about different fabrics that I could maybe make this jumper in again because I just feel like it's my perfect kind of jumper. I love things that are cropped and um, I like the gathered sleeve detailing as well. So there's a lot about this jumper that I really like. So um, I don't know if you've, you've made this jumper before. If you have, I'd love to know how you found it. Um, there's a few different variations in the pattern pack that you can make, um, but I'm pleased with the one that I chose um, this time anyway, but maybe in the future, I'll have a go at doing one of the other designs as well. Um, so, but, I hope you've enjoyed seeing everything that I've got to share with you today and if you have, like I said earlier, I would love it if you could give me a thumbs up and leave me any comments below that you'd like to, um, just because that encourages YouTube to share my video with other people. But I hope you've enjoyed uh, hearing about the patterns and fabrics and different things that I've used today. I've got lots of good con content coming up on my channel soon, so if you do press that notification bell if you haven't already and you are a subscriber then you won't miss any of my future videos. I'm on my holiday soon to Wales, so I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that I won't get behind in um, filming my future videos, but I have got lots of cool, good content coming up, I think, anyway. Uh, so keep an eye out, and I'll be back on my channel really soon. But until next time, I'll leave it there. Thanks for joining me today. See you soon. Bye.